Hello, my name is Krista Harder and this is my how to make kombucha video. I am hoping to cover everything so please bear with me if this video seems choppy because I have no clue how to edit so <laughs> you get one take. Um, there are three things you need to initially brew your kombucha. The first one is tea bags like these and you can use either black or green tea, doesn't matter, but it has to be pure tea. It can't be a flavored tea and it cannot have any additives. So like Earl Grey, you can't use Earl Grey. I don't even suggest using Orange Pico because I'm pretty sure it's got preservatives in it at least. So anyway, I buy mine actually from Dollar Tree. Ironically enough, they're, it's just pure black tea and pure green tea and it's like 100 tea bags for $1.25. So that's what I use. Um, the other thing you need is sugar. This is the organic cane sugar from Costco. It's like four kilograms for 12 bucks Canadian. And uh, I like it. You can use white sugar, I'm pretty sure, but I like to keep my stuff natural. Uh, and the last thing you need is water. My water has just finished boiling here. And I live outside of the city, so our water is well water, which means I can use tap water. If you live in the city, you cannot use tap water because it has chlorine and it has fluoride. And those are toxic to your SCOBY because your SCOBY is made of bacteria. So we are going to get going here. I'm going to, this is, this is your home here, right here in my cupboard. All right, let's see. Sorry, you have to bear with me here. There, okay. Aha, we got this. All right, so I'm going to set my stuff up here. We have ourselves a jar. This is the one gallon Anchor Hawking Cracker Jar from Walmart. It is $8, I believe. I like that it's square um, because that means I can stack my jars next to each other in the cupboard. So anyway, that's what I use. So you are gonna just plop six tea bags in there. Three, four, five, six. Keep this in mind. If your tea bags are like a two cup tea bag, then you're only using three. And then you're gonna add a cup of sugar. So here's half a cup and one cup. You may be thinking, Krista, can I actually use less sugar because then it will be healthier? No, because your SCOBY needs to eat the sugar. The longer you let it brew, the more sugar your SCOBY will eat up. So if you want it to be less sugar, just brew your kombucha for longer. It'll also have more alcohol then. All right, now we are gonna add our water. We do this part slowly so we don't crack our jar because this is not a tempered glass. This is meant to be a cracker jar, but it was cheap and square, so it's what we use. And we pour slowly and that way we don't break it. All 12 cups in there. There, boom. And then stir it up. The reason we stir it up right away is to dissolve the sugar. If you wait till later, you've got like a solid mass of sugar. Um, you could potentially add your sugar later, but it takes a lot more to dissolve it in cold water. So this is literally the, it for this step. This gets set aside for about 12 hours. You want it to come fully to room temperature and you just leave those tea bags in there while it's doing that. So I'm just going to push this out there. Now, I made a batch this morning. Ha ha. And here it is. So this has been cooling um, all day, and now my hands have been washed. Uh, I use dish soap. Do not use a scented soap or a treated soap that has like moisturizers in it. You want something that's going to leave your skin dry. The reason for that is you don't want to mix oils with your SCOBY. So clean, dry hands. I wash them and I actually dry them with paper towel or a towel, whatever, so that they're just clean. And take off any rings because um, metal can react with the SCOBYs as well. So just the whole process, make sure your hands are clean. Um, I don't know if you can see on camera, but my water kind of leaves a film on the surface. And that's just because ours is well water, so there's a bit of iron in there. And that's normal. So you're just going to reach your hand right in there and pull out your tea bag. See this dirt? I don't know if you can... Yeah, you can see it. That's actually just iron deposits. So that's like the film on the top of our water. And that's fine. Your scoby, that doesn't affect your SCOBY. So you're going to wring out your tea bags. Count them. Make sure you've got all six. One, two... Three, four, five, I'm missing one. There it is. Boom, six. Now we are ready to add our SCOBY. So, here is, this is my 
SCOBY Hotel. Now let me just take this out so I can show you properly here. All right, SCOBY Hotel. So as you use your SCOBY, you will grow more SCOBYs and you don't really need them all at once. So this is called a SCOBY Hotel and you add a little bit of kombucha to it every time and that gets really strong and it's more like a kombucha brine. Uh, and you can store your scobies in there and they're just happy to live in there. In fact, it's healthy for them to go in there once in a while because it actually, um, it reduces the amount of yeast in there. Uh, and if anything is going to get unbalanced, it's going to be an overproduction of yeast in your scoby. And that can lead to like a, an opaque and almost turpentine like smell in your kombucha. Plus, if you're a girl, it can lead to yeast infections, which is not fun. So keep your scoby nice and balanced and plan to buy another jar that you're going to store extra scobies in for a scoby hotel. So we're going to take our scoby out of here, put you back in your home. Yeah. All right. Where are we here? Yeah, we're good. All right. So open this up. This is just a coffee filter. Some people use cheesecloth. Some people use paper towel. Uh, I have tried both. And I recommend only using coffee filters. And the reason for that is fruit flies. They can get through paper towel. Yup. And they love kombucha. They like, it's their favorite thing in the world. So if you don't want fruit flies, use coffee filters. And so what I've done, as you can see, is I've taken the lid of this jar and I literally just took a pair of scissors and chopped a hole in the middle. And I put, the only reason I put tape around it is because I have a toddler and I just don't want anyone cutting themselves. So. Tape is optional, uh, but as you can see, it's a cheap jar and it rusts, so it was probably a good idea anyway. All right, so if you've never seen a SCOBY, welcome. Ooh, this is a very clear one. That's not normal, but this one, like, you can, like, see right through it. See, I'm holding it in my hand. Anyway, we'll use a different one. Ouch. I have hangnails and it hurts. So here's one. Um, if you can see, this one is actually quite thick. It's very mature, so this batch of kombucha may not even take a full week. So, I am going to put our scoby in our brewed kombucha. And it's sinking right now, and it's going to slowly float to the top. Sometimes they stay, like, halfway through your batch, and that's actually okay. In fact, it sometimes produces a nicer kombucha. Um, now, generally speaking... You have a finished batch of kombucha when you do this because you just keep brewing over and over again. It takes a week to brew it, so you kind of want to, when one batch is finished, this is one I brewed last week. Um, when this one's finished, you should be starting your next one because that's going to take another week. So you have a week to drink this, and by then, this one will be ready to drink. So what I do is I always want to keep my brine full, so I'm going to take a little bit of finished kombucha out of here and I'm gonna put it in my SCOBY tower. So, just wanted to tell you that, what I'm doing. Make some eye contact. There. All right. So, this one was a sinker, so all my SCOBYs are in the bottom, so it actually made a fresh, tiny little SCOBY here. I'm gonna stick that in my SCOBY tower, and I'm gonna add, I'm literally just gonna dump some in, about a cup, that's what I say. And all that this does is A, it replenishes the liquid, but it also adds a little bit of that sugar, a little bit of that yeast back in there, keeps the balance good. So there, we'll set this aside, do that later. Now, every time you're brewing your fresh kombucha, you wanna spike it a little bit. So you wanna add a little bit of this brine into here. Not much, just like, there, that's enough. Just enough to just get that bacteria going in there and it just, it starts everything off. I'm just gonna dry my hands off here. All right, dry the ring off here so that your coffee filter can not dissolve. And there we go. You can reuse the same coffee filter, you can use a new one, doesn't matter. That is it for brewing your first batch of kombucha. So now, we will take this and I will put it in, you wanna put it in a dark area that's not too warm, um, not too cold. It's bacteria, so if it's too warm, it'll brew really fast, and if it's too cold, it'll brew really slow, just like bacteria growth anywhere. If it's really cold, then the bacteria grows slowly, right? So you want somewhere with good bacteria growth, not your bathroom. That's just a little weird. <laughs> too much bacteria. So I just use my pantry, 
And I just carry it by the lid, which is living on the edge. And in we go into my nice clean pantry. And it'll live there for a week. All right, let's continue. So now we are going to, can you see everything? There we go. All right, we are going to, one week later, boom. So it's been a week. You've left that in your pantry for a week and now it's next week. Literally all we're gonna do is reach in, take out our scobies. Oh, these are some tired looking scobies. <laughs> Those ones will get retired to the compost bin soon. Compost bin loves scobies. Lots of extra bacteria to help break down that compost. Just slice them up, stick them in the compost. Okay, so we're done with our scoby hotel. We're gonna, again, dry off the lip. Cover it up. Uh, there's a little hole here. I would be much more diligent about that if it was fruit fly season. It is not fruit fly season, so I don't care. Um, okay, Scoby Hotel also lives in my pantry, so that's gonna go right back in there. Now, what I do with this, if I am bottling it, which I'll pretend I am, I use these, these are from Ikea. It's the kind of, they're like for homebrew wine. You got the lid thing, super fancy. Yeah, they're like three bucks. So anyway, that's what I put my kombucha in. So, I like to strain my kombucha, and the reason for that is you get kind of the little snot-shaped floaties in there, and I don't really like them. So, you just strain it. Notice that my strainer is plastic. Kombucha scobies can react with anything that is aluminum. Um, so I just choose not to use metal if I can, because uh, I don't really know what all my stuff is made out of. Now I have put a funnel into my jar. Woo! Let's see if I can hold you. So it's getting high up there. All right, funnel is just to prevent messes. So here we go. And we just fill the jar. Now, I do not like plain kombucha because, you know, I can't leave well enough alone. So what I do is I add stuff. So you were probably wondering, but I want kombucha that tastes different. And that's just fine, and you can. I need to save a little bit for a friend that is plain, just because she wanted to try it plain. So I'm gonna leave about that much. And I'm just gonna pour the rest back in my jar. All right, so what I'm doing here now is called a second brewing. There is no SCOBY in here. We wanna keep our SCOBYs pure. Our SCOBYs only touch pure iced tea. They do not touch um, they don't touch the fruit. So, pretend this is full. You can't tell because this is a bird's eye view. So I have in here, we've got, um, this is pear. It's peeled and chopped. If it's, if you buy organic produce, you don't have to peel it, but I am not made of money. So we do not buy organic. And this is just pear. You can use any fruit. Um, pomegranate's nice. Cranberries are actually really nice at Christmas time. Uh, apples, oranges, I peel both, like, almost all my fruit if I use it, because again, we don't buy organic. This is pineapple, but it's is like the ends with the weird thingies in them. We're having a birthday party tomorrow and can't let it go to waste, so it's going in my kombucha. If I had freshly done it, the cores would go in there too. So you can put anything in there because you're not going to eat it. So there's that. And then I have like a full cup of ginger in here. Uh, I did not peel the ginger, it's from the ground. There's no way it's got pesticides on the skin. So I just chop it up. Ginger makes your kombucha fizzy. So I recommend always putting ginger in and lots of it because it tastes delicious and it's good for you. So that is it for that part. So legit, just a bunch of fruit in there. And then by next week, you can do like three to seven days where you just have it like this. And by next week, it'll actually have like a, like a thin, clear, like that first scoby I was holding, it'll have one of those intermeshed with the fruit, which is kind of cool because what's happening is the bacteria is all in this tea now. And that's a good thing. And it 
He finds the sugar in the fruit and it attaches to it and it starts forming another SCOBY like it's supposed to. Now, unfortunately, you do have to throw that away because now that it's inter interacted with the fruit, it does change the bacteria slightly. You don't want to be reusing that. You just don't know, right? There have actually been cases. There was someone who used, I don't know, they used something from their garden and they got poisoned because they composted their rose bush in it or something. Like it was just like a, it was like a chain of events that led to them being poisoned by their kombucha. So just be diligent on this. It's just not worth the risk. So yeah, so one week later, this will have like a spider web looking kombucha scoby over it. And you just, you just pull it all out. You stick it in the garbage or in the compost if you compost. And you do the same thing we did with the first kombucha. You use your filter and then you use your strainer and you just stick it in your bottles. And then you can either leave it on the counter for 12 hours to try and build up some fizz, or you can stick it right in your fridge. And I always use a piece of scotch tape and I just put it right on my jar and then I write the date on there. And that way I always know what's my freshest kombucha. Um, if you flavored it, you can write what the flavor is and stuff. You can just peel it off every batch and put a new label on it. So that is kombucha. And so for your first batch, you just need to know those three ingredients. But then afterwards, once you get into it, it's sort of a well-oiled machine. And even though this video is about 17 minutes, it usually takes me about like five minutes to get all this done if I'm not explaining it. It's really quite simple once you get into it. So best of luck and have fun.